Now that we understand the center of gravity concept, we're going to find out how to calculate the center of gravity using this simple example. In this example, I have a barge that's made up of five steel plates, and each of the plates have a plate thickness of one inch. My barge's dimensions are 72 inches length overall, an 18 inch depth, and a 24 inch beam. I've also labeled my uh, coordinates so that my positive x-axis is going aft, my positive y-axis is to my starboard side, and my positive z is up. I've also placed my reference point at the intersection of the midplanes of plates 1 and 5. So I have my midplane of plate 1 in the middle of the 1 inch plate. And I do the same thing for 5 and that's where my reference point is. Next I have my table for finding center of gravity and I'm just going to simply fill in this table. So in the first column I'm going to fill in the items. And so I have 5 plates and each of them are labeled for easy reference. Next, I'm going to find the dimensions of my plates, and so I have them listed here in inches. You can see that the bow plate is only 22 inches wide just because of the way that I designed this barge. Uh, you can see that if my beam is 24 inches, the 1 inches on either side uh, account for the 22 inch um, width of my bow plate. Since the plates are rectangular, I'm going to simply multiply the two dimensions of the plates to get the areas. So that's my next column that's now filled in. The next thing I'm going to do is fill in my weight column. Now I'm going to assume a plate density of 5.1 pounds per square feet. Now of course because I want my uh, weight to be in pounds and my area is already in square inches, I need to convert this. So one square feet is composed of 144 square inches. So this number is going to be multiplied by my area in order to get my weight. And you'll see that my heaviest plate is my bottom plate, which makes sense because it's my largest area. By summing the weight column, I find that the total weight of the barge is 174.4 pounds. Now I'm going to start finding the longitudinal center of gravities of each plate. Since I assumed my reference point is located at the midplane of the bow and bottom plates, I'm going to be consistent and find all of my distances from the reference point to the midplanes in question. I am able to assume that the center of gravity is located at the middle point of the plate because the plate is homogeneous, meaning that the composition and therefore the density of the plate is the same throughout. To find my longitudinal center of gravity, I find the longitudinal distance between the reference point and the midplane of the plate. For plate number one, this distance is zero inches because the reference point is already located at the midplane of the plate. Therefore, there is no longitudinal distance to speak of. For plate number two, the midplane that I'm speaking about for longitudinal is this midplane right here, and then the center of gravity would be right there. So I need to find the distance between the midplane of plate one and the midplane in question. And therefore, you can see that this distance would be half of 72 inches minus the half inch distance for the plate thickness. And so I have that filled in right here. Naturally, my port and starboard plate are symmetric, so it's the same distance. And then the bottom plate's also the same way. And then, of course, the stern plate is 71 inches because I have the half inch distance for my midplane here and I have the half inch distance for my midplane here. For the vertical center of gravity, the bottom plate has a zero inch distance because of the location of the reference point. The vertical midplanes for the remaining plates are all the same at eight and a half inches, and that's because the vertical planes that I'm looking for are right here. So for the port plate, that is my vertical, and then of course, all the other plates have the same midplane. For the transverse center of gravity, only the port and starboard plates will have a transverse distance because their midplanes do not lie on the barge's center line. It is important to note that since the port plate is on one side of the coordinate axis, its transverse dimension will be negative. So here I'm looking for the midplane of the port plate 
and that's this one. And so of course that doesn't lie on the center line of the barge like the midplane of plate one or the midplane of plate four. Now I multiply the center of gravity distances by the weight in order to get the moment. So my weight times my longitudinal center of gravity distance equals my longitudinal moment. My weight times my vertical center of gravity distance equals my vertical moment, and my weight times my transverse center of gravity distance equals my transverse moment. Next I sum my moment columns. To find the composite center of gravity of the entire barge, I divide each moment sum by the weight. So if I'm looking for my longitudinal center of gravity, I divide my longitudinal moment by my weight. And so I have 6,191 inch-pounds divided by 174.4 pounds. And this gives me an LCG of 35.5 inches. And remember, this is in reference to my reference point. So if I traveled 35.5 inches after my reference point, I would find my LCG. And then, you know, I'd have a complete center of gravity right about here, which is 35.5 inches aft. Oh, let's go back. My vertical center of gravity, if I calculated it, would end up being 5.84 inches above my reference point which makes sense this is lower than my vertical center of gravity for each of the individual plates and that's because my bottom plate which is very heavy um, it takes and lowers the center of gravity my transverse center of gravity is zero inches which makes sense since my barge is symmetric about the center line if I had a barge that had a transverse center of gravity other than zero, I would expect the barge to sit unevenly in the water since the moment would be acting on one side of the barge. To show that center of gravity can be done several ways with the same result, the example has been repeated so that the plates are cut differently, but the size of the barge remains the same. So in this example, my barge is still 72 inches LOA, 18 inches depth, and 24 inches beam, but now plate one where in the previous example was only 22 inches wide is now 24 inches wide. Of course my weight is still the same and because my reference point is at the same intersection of the mid planes of plates 1 and 5, my moments are now the same. Instead if I wanted to place my reference point to say outside of the barge, my center of gravity is not going to change. My center of gravity is always going to be in the same place of the barge. I can't control that. But my location longitudinal center of gravity is going to be a larger distance than it was in my previous example. I could also place my uh, reference point, say, maybe at the forward face of plate one, and then therefore if I would take like the longitudinal uh, distance of plate one from the reference point, I would just take it to the forward face of plate one, which would be zero. And I would want to keep this consistent, so I'd also take the forward uh, plane of plate four, but the reason that I do mid planes in the previous example is because they work best because the plates have a finite thickness and the true center of gravity is really in the middle of the plates, not on the forward face of the plates. And that is how you calculate the center of gravity in this ex example of a barge.